Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So today we're gonna to be crafting this milk box from uh, Nilmara Quintella on Etsy. So she's one of my favorite designers. I love her files. This is actually probably gonna be one of my top favorite files because it is so easy to fold. Um, I've done lots of reels and um, a tutorial on, you can see me folding it. It's so easy, it just needs one strip of glue to to close it up, you know, to make it into um, like a cube. And then everything else you just fold up. It, I, I'm not doing it justice, it's so easy. <laughs> At some point though, I think I'm gonna even do this blindfolded. That's how easy this file is. So here is the front, it's, um, it's for the book club, and I sorry, sorry, it got a little fuzzy, but um, it's called the Smart Cookie. So it's a bakery, it's a little shop with an awning, and then the cookie, and then the book over here, it looks very much like the cover of the book. So, all right, now that you've seen this, and it has sprinkles all around, which I think this light is too bright. Let me see if that's better. Oh, I think that's better, yeah, because now you can actually see the sprinkles. Um, and then there's cookies inside, so when we drop off the book, um, you have a cute little snack, enjoy the book with your family, um, encouraging reading and that it's a family activity. I love it. All right, so first thing is we get the file. I just wanna talk about what this looks like um, and then we'll recreate it. So this is the actual file for to fold up the milk box. This is the awning. Uh, these are the colors that go on the little um, the awning so that it gives it looks just like the book the book is uh, green and white so it's really really cute um, here is the cookie with the eyes and this is the sheet that I use for the sprinkles so let's kind of break this down piece by piece um, so the sprinkles let's look at that this is um, an image from design space so let me get you the image info. It's called Sprinkle Square. Oh, hold on. You can't see that because my face is right there. Give me a second. I'm going to move my face over to this side today. Okay, here we go. Uh, so this sprinkle guy is from Design Space, like I said. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. The image info is it's called Sprinkle Spare. <laughs> Sprinkle Square Coaster. <laughs> and we're gonna view the image set because I'm gonna bring it in so you can see what I did. And basically when I went to go cut this, I'm gonna show you in a second. Oh, so there's a ton of sprinkles within this set. Um, let's see what it comes up with. Mm -mm -mm. There it is. So here it is, um, Sprinkle Square Coaster. All right, so you click on it and then you add it to the canvas. And when I went to go make this, I'll show you, what I did was I did four copies and I put each coaster in a corner on my cutting mat and then I cut out a four by four a sheet of cardstock in multiple colors. So each color went into a corner and I cut all the sprinkles at one time. Um, so that's this one. And here, all you need to do is based on the size of this, however big you want the sprinkles, right? You can make it a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. It's up to you. Just keep in mind that the sprinkles are kind of small. So I did mine this size, which is the square is, like I said, almost four inches by four inches. All right, so that's how you get the sprinkles. Um, let's look at the cookie. The cookie, um, okay, the cookie is actually a sprinkle donut, and let's see where to find this. Image info, it's in the sprinkle donut pennant banner. <laughs> so let's click on it so you can see. Um, I had a hard time finding a cookie um, that had the frosting on it. This donut was the closest thing I thought to the smart cookie. So let's insert this one um, and add to canvas. And I'll show you, I mean, I kind of like it anyway because then I can show you um, how to manipulate the donut 
to make it so that it's like the actual cookie. And in case you don't know what this looks like, actually, let me. Um, just so that we know what we're talking about, because not everybody. I had never heard of this book um, until someone picked it for book club, which I think is so cute. So just so you can see, this is what, you know, the awning, the and then the kind of like um, kid writing. Here's the smart cookie with the sprinkles. So you can see now how similar. I should have done a lighter color cookie. Um, that's where, that's my regret. <laughs> but the sprinkles, the awning, the colors are all. And then the book, I did HTV. We'll talk about that in a second um, to kind of mimic these books here. Okay, so now that you know what that looks like. Let's go over here. So uh, the first thing is I realized I really only needed the two layers. I didn't need all these layers, right? So I just clicked on them and deleted it. And then on this one, on the yellow frosting or whatever, I'm gonna go to contour and I'm gonna hide it all because my cookie doesn't have a hole in the middle, right? And I don't need the sprinkles. So I'm gonna hide all. And it left me with these little cutouts, which I thought was okay. I ended up, I don't know if you can see this, I ended up putting sprinkles where those cutouts were and then added more sprinkles around the, the carton, the milk carton. All right, let's go to the actual donut and go to contour. And same thing with this one. We're gonna hide it all, and it's just gonna be now the cookie with the frosting. The eyes are just um, circles. So, you know, make your circles the size that you want. Um, and then the mouth, what I ended up doing was I, what did I do with the mouth? The mouth was, a, um, was also an image. So let's go and see. It's the smiling kawaii face because it has that cute little, you know, the little mouth. <laughs> so we can go and look at this. And so I use this mouth, okay? So click on it to insert, add to canvas. And we already have a lot of small pieces with the sprinkles, which, you know, if you follow me, that's really not my style to have all these little pieces, but it's book club and I wanted to do something really, really cute. But for this cookie, what you wanna do is, I don't wanna deal with this small little piece right here. So I'm gonna go to contour, I'm gonna get rid of the eyes because I don't need the eyes, I just want the mouth. Okay, so here's my mouth. Make it the size that you want and where you want it. And then what I did was I grabbed the smile and the frosting layer and I sliced it so that I'm gonna put a bigger um, pink piece behind it all so that I don't have to deal with the small cutout of the smile and possibly lose it. Um, you know, possibly it won't cut properly. So there's just all these things. I'd rather have this like that, okay? And then what I did with this piece is I just got rid of it. So these pieces we don't need. And instead, I'm just gonna use this circle, okay? I'm gonna make it smaller. And I'm gonna make that circle pink because that's the color of her mouth. Okay, so instead of that small smile, I'm now gonna look for a dot, like a big circle, and it's so much easier to handle. All right, so now we've got this completely done, right? Because the eyes are just three circles of different sizes and you can do that, you know, according to the picture, however you want to. So I'm now gonna get rid of my cookie and I'm gonna get rid of this because now we've recreated the cookie. I'm gonna move this over. So everything that we've recreated, I'm gonna move to the side. Now the books, um, I ended up using this one because I wanted to show a, a stack of books. Um, but you know, this thing is not very big. It's, I mean, it's sizable. You can see how, how big it is. It fits a whole thing of, you know, cookies in there, but 
the actual book part is kind of small and I wanted it to say, I know the book is called The Smart Cookie, but I wanted the girls to have this like affirmation, I am a smart cookie and that the book is written by them. So each of the girls got a milk box with their name on it. So um, let's see. Uh, the book is just uh, another image from Design Space. So let's go and... Um, hmm, why does it not give me the actual image number? All right, well, uh, let's go and find it so that you definitely have it. So I did books. And so as you can see already from this one, while this is thinking. Um, I use a lot of images from Design Space. I find that it's very, uh, very useful and just makes it quicker. I can easily go find these images, but then that means every image that I wanna use, I have to find it, download it, and then upload it into Design Space. So for me, it's worth paying for Cricut Access because also some of their bulk items and when their th when their um, items go on sale, it's actually a pretty good deal between having Cricut access and one of their big sales. It's actually worth it all. So I feel like in the end, I um, I don't know. It might be a stretch to say I come out ahead because I'm still paying quite a bit of money, but I find that it's worth its value. So all right, here are all the book images. And I mean, I would have loved to have done like a stack of books, like the actual cover, but it was just gonna be so small. I wanted it to have the title. I wanted it to have the girls' names on it as well. So let's see where my little set of books are. Um, it is not showing up. Let me see. I'm double checking that it wasn't already something that we had passed. No. Oh, it. I did. It's this one right here. All right. So this is. It's just under books. Here's the image number. All right. Um, add to canvas. Now I like the books because it's three layers or I made it three layers. Let's see, is it really three layers? Oh, it's not. It's actually just, did I make it three layers? Uh, interesting. Okay, so here's my book. What I did was I duplicated it and I wanted, I'm gonna contour and hide all. This one I'm gonna make white because it's the actual pages. So it's going to uh, go to arrange, send to the front. So this black layer is gonna sit on top of the white and then the white will show through for the pages. Um, and did I use this one? Because I, okay, let's go to contour and let's see if I can separate out those pieces. I'm not really sure how I did that. Um, I'm thinking, sorry, if I did this, that would leave me these pieces, which is, no, those are the pages. Um, I don't know what's going on. That top layer looks like it's all one color. I don't know how I got, this must not be the same set of books because I had two layers. Let's go see. We gotta get to the bottom of this. Yeah, see, this is three different colors. So this one is, here's the image. So it's a little bit different because the other one was actually only one layer, right? That I was able to make into two layers. But this one, let's go see. Let's add it to the canvas. 
because I wanted the book cover to be a different I went all pink on this I did pink letters I did pale pink for the book cover and then for the edges I did a darker pink I think that's what I did but it was it was just cute it, it matches the the cover of the actual book all right oh so this did come in three layers okay um so you can change that you know resize it so that it fits within this piece right and then what i did was i typed out i'm a smart cookie by each one of the girls you can see these are really really small 0.21 inches so that's like one small square within the square on your mat like on your self-healing mat it's teeny tiny and um i cut this with htv i knew i wanted to cut it with htv for a couple of reasons one i didn't want to deal with cardstock with each one of these individual letters and trying to glue down each piece or each letter because one they're tiny most likely some of them would have ripped and then I would have to recut it. Then I gotta keep track of each one and line them up. With HTV, uh, first of all, using polytape HTV is amazing. Um, it cut all those letters and it weeded super easily and then it took three seconds to iron it onto my paper cardstock. So that's why I love HTV for these small projects. Now you could ask and say, why not just vinyl, right? Adhesive vinyl. I don't like adhesive vinyl for this because you have to transfer it with a transfer sheet, right? And when you pull it off, you may tear some of your cardstock. So that's why I don't like um, using um, adhesive vinyl as opposed to HTV. So heat transfer vinyl or iron on vinyl, it too does come with a sticky carrier sheet. But what happens is when you apply heat to it, it no longer is sticky to whatever you're, you know, to the cardstock. So when it gets enough heat and it's activated, the sheet is no longer sticky. You just pull it off and nothing gets ripped or torn or messed up at all. So that's why. All right, so once you do that, all we have left, um, I'm gonna move all this over. And you wanna resize it, of course, right? Just type it out. I'm gonna move all that, okay? Then we have just this piece. So I'm gonna go and upload it so you can see what it looks like when you first upload it in, okay? Um, view all, let me see. Oh, it was right there. It was the third item, I didn't recognize it. But you can see all my fun projects. It's this file right here. So I'm gonna add it to the canvas. So what happens is you buy it on Etsy. Um, the shop name again is Nomara Quintella and it should be in the description of this video. I don't get anything um, for you guys purchasing it. I just am a fan of hers and I know that I'm gonna make these projects and so I've kind of just stuck with her because I know it's gonna be a good file. So that's kind of where that is. All right, let me move this to a cleaner area so we can see. What's cool about this file is this is how it comes in, okay? So it comes in with the cutting file, which is a little bit hard to see. So um, let me change the color of this so that you can see that it comes with the, what the cut file looks like. It, um, it actually has the score lines and I prefer these to be cut lines. So this is your knife cutting each one of these little um, dashes. It just makes it fold so much easier. Okay, so this is how the file comes in. It's got the cutting file, the actual file that we're going to cut. It has the skins without bleeds. What you would use this for is like the awning. These are, each one of these pieces will break up so you can slice things out and know that it's gonna be the exact right size. So this is if you end up cutting something, um, you know, just to put on top. Now, if you end up doing print and cut, so for instance, if you were doing like uh, a frozen theme and you wanted a picture of Anna and Elsa right here, you wanna use skins with bleeds and make sure that it fits this piece because what will happen is, for instance, if you have, um, that's a bad example. Let me think of a better example. Like, 
shoot, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Let's think of Moana. Moana on the ocean, okay? So if you have an image of Moana on the ocean that's supposed to fit here, you want the bleeds because if you don't put a bleed, what might happen is you might end up getting a white border and you don't want a little thin white border along here. You want the, the blue sky and the blue ocean to go all the way to the end, right? So you want it with bleed. That's the difference. Okay, now that I've talked to myself, I talked to you guys, talked your ear off. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> um, let's ungroup this and let's get rid of the things we don't need. I don't need any of these things here, like the instructions. So I'm just gonna delete that, delete this. I'm gonna delete this because we're not printing anything, um, but I'm gonna leave this here, okay? Um, because we have the awning, and the awning goes onto these two pieces right here, okay? So here, let's ungroup this, and I'm gonna remove the things that we don't need. The awning is the only thing, oh wait, it's not, is it still not ungrouped? Okay, let me ungroup it. I don't need that. I don't need this. And in fact, I don't even need this, right? I just need this, these two pieces. Okay. And because the awning is one whole piece, I'm actually just gonna grab this and weld it. I want it to be one piece, okay? Let's go to our awning and Let's see. Um, here's the image info. So it's the awning. Let's click on that. Yep, and here it is. So we're gonna add it to the canvas. Now you may look at this and say, it doesn't really look exactly like the one we used, right? So, couple of things first of all it's like way small right so let's make this bigger so it kind of fits in there right and then um you can see like um it's almost that size i made it three little scallops or scoops whatever you want to call it right so this kind of fits right there Almost, yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down to our piece over here. Ah, come on, design space. What just happened? My piece disappeared. Okay, here we go. So I wanted it to go past the piece and it's gonna look like this. And oh, I just realized, you know what we didn't do? We didn't resize this. That's why this is so small. So this right now, I'm gonna move this piece into here. So when it comes in, oops, and let me move my face again. I'm gonna move it over here, back to where I normally am. Okay, all right. This piece, it comes in at 9.7 by 6.89. I, when I did this, this ended up being um, 2.75 inches and 3.75 inches. So it can fit quite a bit. That's maxing this out. So I'm gonna max this out to the width of 11.5 so that I end up using a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, okay? All right, now my piece is going to be big enough. So now I'm gonna stick this in and it's gonna be about that size. So let me move this to the back for a second. Um, arrange, send to the back so that we can actually see what we're doing, right? So this, so you see how in this shape, I only fit one, two, three, not the full three. So I'm actually gonna take this piece, I'm gonna unlock it, and I'm gonna make it 
thinner and smaller so that it works with my piece, okay? Now I'm gonna end up slicing it. Um, so let's move this down a little bit, okay? And I'm actually gonna need to make this piece longer because um, I'm gonna unlock this and I want the height 1.846 I'm gonna change it to three, okay? So now watch what happens. I'm gonna take, oops, no. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to remove the score lines, okay? I'm gonna grab these two items and I'm gonna slice. So then I'm gonna have this piece that now, oh, uh, why did my piece look so small? Did I, what just happened there? I'm gonna unlock it, I don't know what I did. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and now it's gonna fit in there. So there's my awning. So that's kind of how you work with that. I, you know what, I don't know what I just did here. How did I miss? You I mean, you kind of get the idea, I don't know, between me talking and I'm not sure what happened, <laughs> to be honest. All right, this little guy, then what you do is to get the little individual pieces like this, what I did was I grabbed a square. Whoa, this looks different. Oh, look, and it has the rounded, what? Look at all these shapes. This is new, I, I, this is the first time that I've seen this. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in this little rounded edge square. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this big and I'm gonna go right straight up to that line. See? And first of all, you need to duplicate this because you want the actual awning, right? The awning's gonna go right here. Then we're gonna slice this out and it's gonna give us the individual pieces. So this is gonna be the right-hand side. See, perfect, right? And then this little guy, you're gonna line it up so that it goes along that little um, indent or whatever. And then we're gonna slice on this side so that we can get, uh, Okay, I grabbed more than, okay, what's going on here? Oh, I see. I'm grabbing, oh, you know what? That's a great lesson. So I am, let me move my face yet again. All right, I went to go slice this, right? And so you kind of saw what I did. I grabbed it from here and I grabbed the yellow and my square. And I would look down here and slicing is grayed out. So what happened is there's an extra piece right here. So I'm actually grabbing more than two items. Now to grab only two items, I'm grabbing my square and then I'm grabbing the yellow piece here. My mouse did not pick up this piece right here. So now I can slice it, which is what I want. <laughs> and here we go. And that's my other white piece. And now you have your awning. Super cute, right? Okay, I'm gonna delete this. Um, oh, the only other thing is, let me show you. When you work with Nomara's files, these cut lines, you have to grab the two. So you have your cut lines and your actual cut template. You need to attach them. That way the cut lines are exactly where you see them on this purple piece. That's all there is to it. So I hope that was fun for you guys. Oh, let me show you what it looks like. Let's go to the Make It screen because I want to show you the sprinkles. Um, after you cut your HTV, I would, you know, like I did five, right? I made five copies of everything. So let me show you what that confetti looks like. 
Where is my confetti? Did I delete the confetti card? Oh man, I'm a hot mess today. I apologize. I'm making this like way more complicated than it should be. Where is my confetti? Oh no, here's my confetti. Just please. Okay. This is what I would do. I would move them into the corners so that it's easy for you to line up on your mat. So this will be, let's move these little, these are the lips if you remember, or the mouth. Okay, this is what I would do. Actually, uh, for this one, let's click on the three dots. I'm just gonna hide it. I only want four colors of sprinkles, okay? This won't be red, yellow, blue, purple, whatever. You cut out your four by four piece of cardstock, put it down in the four corners. It will cut all your confetti on one run through it, okay? Here is the actual cut file, the milk carton or the milk box itself. The cut, the score lines are gonna cut right where you see it. It's gonna come out and it's gonna look like, I have one right here. It's gonna look like this. And then you just fold everything. I'll be perfect. Um, and that's it. So I hope that you guys make this. Um, I actually want to do one for Santa. So I'll have Santa's cookies in there with a glass of milk next to it. So like maybe a red box, maybe even a white box and make it like one of those cute, colorful, um, be merry kind of themes, like, you know, with the pink and purple. I don't know. I love that. Um, we'll see, but I hope that you guys end up using this. This is a lot of fun. It looks so cute. And if you're doing it for a party, if you have like a stack of them, they look absolutely adorable. You can even, what you could do is you can have it all ready to be folded and you can have the kids actually make it and fill up their party favors with whatever candy you have out or something like that. All right, thank you so much. And um, let me know what you think. If you wanna see something, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for subscribing and watching.